What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Brad's Bioactive Builds, where I do step-by-step, do-it-yourself, naturalistic animal enclosures. In today's video, I'll be going over what I use for the substrate, planting the plants, the filter, and adding vents. We're getting pretty close to the end of this series, so thanks for joining me on this journey. But don't worry, I already have some cool builds I've started working on that I can't wait to share with you in the future. Be sure to check out part one where I build the enclosure from scratch, part two where I build out the hardscape and use a game changer product Polygem Zoopoxy, and do a detailed step by step on how I built the drip wall waterfall. Part three where I build out the ceiling from the lights, the fans, the mist king and the fogger. Part four I install the glass track and create a pocket door so this whole enclosure opens up for viewing, cleaning, and maintenance purposes. Along with how I engineered a false bottom for a large reptile that likes to dig. Alright, let's go! Picked up 15 bags of topsoil, 6 bags of play sand. Started spreading the play sand into the small holes I drilled out from part 4. Play sand is going to drain much better than substrate, so I wanted to make sure that there was no resistance with water getting to the false bottom. I'll be doing two layers of substrate. The first layer will consist of topsoil, play sand, charcoal, and eco-earth. Mix it up to get a good consistency. There's about 70% topsoil, 30% sand. Mix in my charcoal and eco-earth. And started filling my first layer into the enclosure. Added some into the hide as well. Got a good depth of the substrate to the hide and added the heat mat. And fished the wire through the backside of the enclosure. For my second layer top layer of substrate I'll be using topsoil and play sand. Along with some other materials that will include some more charcoal, tree fern fiber, eco earth, repti bark, sphagnum moss, and mixed it all together. And again started throwing it in. But this time, I'll build up the back side of the enclosure to give it some more depth perception. In building out the reservoir for the drip wall, I wanted to be able to put something in there that was lightweight, but also cosmetically and appealing to the eye. But first I had to create a low point with this 90 degree PVC elbow that'll suck water from the bottom of the reservoir. That'll feed the exterior canister filter I built on the back side of the enclosure with a 5 gallon bucket using a pump to shoot the water back up to the top of the drip wall. It's definitely worth checking out how I built this in part 2 of the series. I had small, medium, and large rocks, placed a few large rocks towards the bottom to block off the entrance to the 90 degree PVC elbow, but still allowing water to pass through. I just didn't want my leka or clay balls to get stuck in the PVC elbow. The clay balls are a great option because it's lightweight and allows beneficial bacteria to grow on them then topped it off with some smaller rocks, medium rocks, and some large rocks. Now to pick out some plants. I definitely wanted hardier plants, but they didn't have everything I was looking for, so I did get some that'll get trampled. Just have to replace them later if they don't last. I like to clean them off the best I can to get rid of any hitchhikers that might be living in the substrate. You could always quarantine them in a separate room, but I found no matter how hard I try, I always get a slight bloom of fungus gnats, although I do have my methods on getting rid of them. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see me make a video on that. When planting, sometimes it's just figuring out what you like and what you don't like. Put some in, or take them out. Replace them with something else. But also being mindful on high traffic areas so things don't get trampled as easily when you're dealing with large reptiles. But my theory is simple, safety in numbers, for that reason I overplant. This way one single plant isn't getting a whole bunch of abuse. Like I did in my blue tree monitor enclosure, I'll link the video in the description below. And in the top right corner. After fully planted I usually wait about a month or two before putting an animal inside. This allows the plants to root and acclimate to the new environment. Gave it a good spray down to rehydrate everything. Added in some sphagnum moss. 
and started topping everything off with leaf litter. For accent pieces, I added some cork bark. And in doing so, I realized I wanted to add a tree stone, so I cut a cork bark tube flat at the bottom. Stood it up on a cement stepping stone and applied zoopoxy around the base to hold it into place. To create a plant holder in the cork tube, I applied spray foam halfway down, spraying it in a back and forth motion so it fills the hole on the inside of the cork tube. Dry locked everything in so it'd have a more natural earthy tone. Drilled some holes so I wouldn't trap water on the inside of the cork tube. Then proceeded to give it a good spray down. Double checking to make sure it will drain as intended. Filled the top up with substrate and had the foreman come by to check my work. Went ahead and planted it. Dug a hole to fit the cement stepping stone. and placed it into the enclosure. I originally wasn't gonna do this, but I'm glad I did. It adds one more element and wonder to the habitat. And then tied everything in, patching it up with sphagnum moss and leaf litter. I added different types of leaves to add interest to the forest floor. Added the fine details with accent pieces, from nut pods, seed pods, monkey pods, pine cones, and different types of botanicals. If you want to know where I got these from, and like supporting small businesses, and someone that's passionate about our hobby, check out the description in the link below. Alright, let's finish off this part of the bioactive build by adding isopods. These roly-poly pill bugs have grown on me once again. I remember being a kid and catching them, so to see them crawling around the vivarium is kind of nostalgic. Plus, they have a lot of added benefits, from aerating your substrate and cleaning up after your animal's waste. Tapped in some springtails that will help keep mold populations down. Now that I have the substrate and the plants in the enclosure, I can get some accurate temperature and humidity readings. The nice thing about Govi gauges is you can get an accurate reading over a period of time so you can dial in everything real nice. Once I had an idea of what I was working with, I knew what size holes to drill for my vents. I started along the bottom side vacuumed out any debris and applied two coats of dry lock to protect the wood. For the bottom, I'll use one inch vents, pop the tab so it anchor into the hole. Before adding the vent, I use mosquito netting to keep my cleanup crew on the inside of the enclosure, and then just press it into place. Use a new razor blade to cut the mosquito netting. And did the same process on the inside. For the top of the enclosure, I used inch and a half vents. I can always add more vents if needed, but technically there's the ability for air to flow through the gap between the front glass panels of the sliding glass door, and air also to flow through the ceiling when the daylights are on the night lights off, and vice versa. And then finish dialing in my basking spots that's hooked up to a dimmer switch. Put in my water heater and filter. Honestly, the filter isn't going to do too much for this application. I'm more concerned about the water getting to the right temperature. Slid my cords to the pipe I made earlier in the series and plugged them into Gobi Smart Plugs. That way I can just turn it off when doing water changes. This build has taken me some time to do, but honestly I've enjoyed every minute of it. There is something super rewarding of watching it all come together. Creating my own ecosystem for my reptiles habitat. Every time I start a build, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like or what ideas I'm going to have along the way. But what I will say is enjoy the process 
and don't stop before your vision is complete. It all starts with an idea, brought to life with action. But as the vivarium ages, plants will die off, and new ones will sprout, creating luscious leaves, and others won't acclimate at all, dying off completely. These will simply have to be removed and replaced with new life. I'll let the vivarium grow in for about a month or two, allowing the plants to root and adapt to their new environment. Letting it grow in will also give my isopods and cleanup crew the ability to colonize before putting in a reptile. I've had a lot of people ask what animals going inside of this enclosure. I've dropped a few hints and easter egg images in parts 1, 2, 3, and 4. Leave a comment if you found any of them. If you've made it this far in the video, hit the like button, drop a comment, and subscribe. It really shows me you guys are watching and enjoying my content. It also shows me that my editing is going in the right direction. I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreons who get behind the scenes footage, early access to my content, one on one video calls. Your support is super appreciated. For the first four videos of the series, check out this playlist right up here. Don't forget to look for any Easter eggs on what animal I'll be putting in the enclosure. Make sure to drop a comment to see if you got it right. But for the next video in the series, check it out right here, where I'll be introducing the reptile that's going inside the enclosure. Any updates on this enclosure will be in a video right there. Thanks for watching.